Good everyone, my name is Patricia Ann Saludos Rivera and I am from BSA 4G1. And for today's video, I would like to introduce or discuss the glow discharges and plasma. So, a glow discharge is a plasma formed by the passage of electric current through a gas. This is analyzing the light produced with spectroscopy can reveal information about the ato atomic interactions in the gas. So glow discharges are used in plasma physics and analytical chemistry. In this part, uh, as you can see the picture below, this is a picture of a classic glow discharge in a crude tube source. This one. So, as an additional for the glow discharge, when you ask that how does plasma glow? A plasma glow or the glow discharge regime owes its name to the fact that the plasma is luminous. When we say luminous, that means bright or shining, full of shedding light, especially in the dark. The glass glows because... The electron energy and number density are high enough to generate visible light by excitation collisions. This means that the plasma is in the contact with only a small part of the cathode surface at low currents. So, for the next part, we have the DC or the direct current glow discharges cathode glow. And this is the highly luminous layer or where you can see the excited atoms, secondary electrons, neutralize the incoming discharge ions and positive cathode ions. For this part, I would like to extend uh, the knowledge for what is the cathode and anode. For the cathode, the meaning of cathode is the negatively charged electrode by which the electrons enter an electrical device. For the anode, this is the vice versa of the cathode. Anode is the positively charged electrode by which the electrons leave a device. So, as you can see in this picture, we have the figure 3 to 13. This is what we call schematics of simplified sputtering system. In uh, part A, we have the DC or the direct current and for the part B, we have the RF or the radio frequency. Direct current and radio frequency are having the same levels of words. But as you can see, in radio frequency, there is an impedance, which what we call the matching network or the capacitor inductor that is needed to ensure the maximum power delivery. And for the next part, we have uh, the luminous regions of the direct current glow discharge. Uh, as you have remembered in the first part of this uh, report, I have shown you a picture of the uh, classic glow discharge in a Crookes tube source. And in this part, I, I would like to uh, expand or I would like to expl explain what are the things that you can see in the, uh, inside a glow discharge crooks uh, in tube source. So first, we have the cathode glow. Uh, cathode glow, uh, this is maintained by electrons produced at the cathode by positive ion bombardment. And for the next part, we have the cathode crooks dark space. And this is shed net positive space charge, low E density. And most of the applied voltage is dropped in here. Positive gas ions are accelerated toward the cathode. And for the negative glow, we have this one is the accelerated electrons acquire enough energy to impact ionize the neutral gas molecules. So, uh, and this black one here, we call this one a substrate or the underlying uh, substance or layer. And this one also is our, is the part where the Faraday dark space belong. 
for the Faraday dark space, it is a dark space of low light intensity between the positive column and the negative glow from the cathode in a vacuum tube. And we have also the positive column, this one. For the positive column, it is a long glowing region which fills most of the distance between the electrodes. And of course, we have the anode dark space. This is uh, the dark region between uh, the anode show and the anode in a vacuum tube occurring when the pressure is low. Of course, we have the cathode and anode. Again, the cathode is, the, uh, is where the electrons or the negatively charged uh, electrode by which the electrons enter the electrical device. And when we say anode, uh, this is the positively charged electrode by which uh, the electrons live by the electrical device. For the next part, we have the ion surface interactions. So we have the sputtering and ion surface interactions. For the sputtering, uh, the meaning of the sputtering is uh, refers to the remover, removal of material from a target by the impacts of high energy particles. But also, we have this one called ion sputtering. So what is ion sputtering? So ion sputtering is a phenomenon where atoms are sputtered from a solid surface when ionized and accelerated atoms or molecules heat the solid surface. This phenomenon is utilized for formation of a thin film on a solid surface, specimen, a coating, and ion etching. So this one is our depiction of energetic particle bombardment effects on surfaces and growing films. We have the near surface region. Surface region absorbs species, energetic particle, and hence chemical reactions spattered red deposited atoms, energetic particle again, we have the photons, secondary electrons, reflected ions, neutrals, spattered atoms, ions, backscattered, uh, the surface, of course, we have the altered region, collision cascade, uh, the channeling, the trapping, lattice defects, implanted displacement and recoil implanted and this stops here or all these things depends on the type of ion or mass charge the nature of surface atoms and ion energy so after the uh, discussion of the sputtering or ion sputtering we have the formula of the sputter yield uh, so how we could get the sputter yield. For the sputtering or the sputter yield, we have to divide them for ejective, ejected atoms or molecules over the incident ion. So for, uh, for the answer of that, that is what we call a measure of efficiency of sputtering. Just like this one, we have the sputter yields. Values are typically in the range of 0 0.01 and 4 and increase with the mass of metals and energy of the sputtering gas. Noble sputtering gases with energies of 0 0.5 kilo electron volt and 1.0 kilo electron volt. So S or sputtering from collision cascade theory by Sigmund. So we have here the theory of Sigmund, which is the cascade collision. This means a measure of the efficiency of momentum transfer in collision. So S or sputtering from collision cascade theory by Sigmund, we have S equals to three alpha over four pi squared, then four M sub one, M sub two over the quantity of M sub one plus M sub two, we have also the E sub one over E sub B, and then quantity of E sub one less, less than one, kilo electron volt and also we have the 3.56 alpha over 1 and z sub 1 z sub 2 over z sub 1 to the power of 2 third plus 
V sub 2 to the power of 3 third times the M sub 1 over M sub 1 plus M sub 2. We have the Sn or S sub N, E over E sub V. We have the E sub 1, a uh, greater than 1 kilo electron volt. So Sn or T and E, this is the stopping power or a measure of the energy lost per unit length due to nuclear collision. So for the sputtering of alloys, uh, we have the thermal evaporation, loss of stoichiometry, sputtering, same composition, much greater difference in vapor pressures compared with the difference in sputtered yield melts, homogenized readily due to rapid atomic diffusion and convection effects in the liquid phase. So for the substrate heating, we have the PCD or the pitch circle diameter times the BP, uh, over the dt is equals to p minus l to p and p small letter p emissivity ellipsis is equals to zero and zero point nine we have also the film deposition rate depends on the sputtering pressure and current variables so when our p goes down or downwards Shed or cathode is wide. So this one is ions are far from target or lost. And we have also the electron mean free path upward uh, into ionization efficiency is low or no plasma below 10 mTOR. So when our P is going upward, uh, this one means electron mean free path. So downward and large ion current but sputtered atoms undergo increased sputtering then this is not efficiently deposited so for the concept of self bias at uh, radio frequency electrodes we have here the figure 3.19 formation of pulsating negatives fev on capacitively coupled cathode of radio frequency di discharge from set a we have the net current zero self bias voltage and for the set b we have the zero current non-zero self bias voltage so this one is the disparity in electron and ion mobilities positively charged electrode draws more e to negative current but no charge transfer through capacitor. So this self bias voltage negative at target electrode capac capacitively coupled electrode. So both electrodes in radio frequency sputtering system should sputter. So this cause a contamination in the sputtered field. So the ratio of the voltage across the shed at the small capacitively coupled electrode or VC to the cross across the large directly coupled electrode or the VD including the substrate and chamber walls etc is given by VC over VD is equals to the uh, quantity of A sub B over A sub C to the power of 4. So this power 4 or the fourth power dependence means large add is very effective in raising the target shed potential while minimizing ion bombardment of grounded fix fixtures. So, uh, for the question of, uh, for the additional uh, information from the question of uh, Sir, Sir John, how does radio frequency generate the plasma? So, this is uh, uh, from the research I had, this is the answer for that question. Uh, radio frequency generate plasma when a radio frequency current is applied to a planar coil. An oscillating magnetic field, B field, is created both above and below it. This generates a primarily azimuthal radio frequency electric field. Inside the vacuum chamber, this E field starts an electron avalanche which creates the plasma. So this is how the radio frequency generate plasma. 
So I think that would be all. Thank you for listening and God bless.